Hey guys, this episode is brought to you by Ancestry DNA, and Ancestry plays a big part in this episode, so stay tuned. And if you go to ancestry.com slash attache, that's ancestry.com slash A T T A C H E, or click on the notes in the description below, you can get 10% off your Ancestry DNA kit today. Let's make something clear right away. Berlin is a cool city. Arm aber sexy, poor but sexy as a former mayor once put it. The low cost and high quality of living has seen the young, the creative, the entrepreneurial and the bohemian flock to Berlin. And over the last few decades, they have built a city, a culture that is showing the world what it means to be cool in the 21st century. In fact, I am very sure that I'm not cool enough to be here, but I hope I can keep the charade up long enough to show you around this amazing city. Berlin, we haven't known each other for that long, but I have a feeling we're gonna get along just fine. Berlin is not a small city. And because it was cleaved in two during the Cold War, large parts of the transport infrastructure, including airports, were built on both sides of the then divided city. But since reunification, Berlin has worked really hard to merge those two systems into a cohesive metropolitan transport network. And for the most part, that process is complete. But when you fly into Berlin, you still have two choices to make, Tegel in the north or Schoenfeld in the south. We flew into Schoenfeld, which is primarily, but not exclusively home to the low cost carriers. So if you too arrive at Schoenfeld, how do you get into town? Trains are your best bet. The station's just a short walk from the terminal and it's served by both the slower but more frequent S-Bahn and the faster regional trains. Now, despite what a lot of guidebooks will tell you, definitely take the regional trains. Yes, they leave less frequently, but they also make way fewer stops than the S-Bahn, so they'll actually get you into town much, much faster. So jump on the RE7 or the RB14 and you'll be at Berlin Hausbahnhof in under 30 minutes. Tickets can be purchased from one of the machines in Terminal A, the railway station, or on the platform itself. The machines are in English and will take your debit and credit cards, but some only take cash, so watch out for that. Don't forget to stamp your ticket to validate it before boarding. What about Tegel, the main intercontinental airport? Slightly more of a ball lake to get into town despite being closer, as your only option is a bus or a taxi. The TXL Express bus will get you to the Hauptbahnhof in 22 minutes, and bus stops are located right outside both Terminal A and B. Tickets can be purchased at the ticket desks in the main terminal, besides airport information, or at the ticket machines outside Terminal A. You'll need a ticket that covers zones A and B. It feels weirdly appropriate as we sit literally on the runway of the now defunct Tempelhof Airport to talk about the weirdly hazy future of both Tegel and Schoenfeld airports. They were both supposed to start winding down their operations when the new Berlin-Brandenburg airport opened. But that was supposed to happen in 2010. Here we are in 2017, and due to a series of colossal screw-ups, it doesn't look like that's gonna happen for at least another two years. And even then, those airports may be kept open indefinitely to keep up with the overflow from the delayed opening of Brandenburg. So stay tuned, because I think that the airport future of Berlin is anything but clear. Anyway, enough airport shenanigans. You're deep in the bosom of beautiful Berlin. How do you get around? Well, as you'd expect from any modern European capital, it's pretty easy. Combination of trains, trams, undergrounds, buses and taxis will get you pretty much anywhere you need to go. Ich verkörpere das, was er bewahrt, eine Schacht und hinter dem steht mein Geist, der zerstörer der Last. Mein Gefühl, mein Gedanken, wo befördert der Bass, die du weitere bedingen, die der Hörer fasst. Und wenn du denkst, rede Spaß, man, dann hör auf den Bass, das sind die Beats, bei denen sogar der Gehörte ablass. Und ich seh meine Saat, wer verkörnt ein Bass. Berlin's divided past means that even to this day, there are a few key locations that are still not connected to each other by a public transport. So a combination of buses, trams, S-Bahn and the U-Bahn is necessary to get around Berlin. But don't let that intimidate you. The fantastic BVG app will help you plan your public transport adventures. And of course, Google Maps is great for working out how you're gonna get from A to B, and it has all the public transport options built into the route directions anyway. And the universal ticketing system means that your one ticket will work on almost all major forms of public transport. You can get a single zonal ticket, which is good for two hours. But if you think you're gonna use public transport even more than a couple of times, it makes way more sense 
to get a one day or seven day public transport ticket. Seven or 30 euros respectively will get you unlimited travel on the trains, trams, subways, and buses within zones A and B, which covers most of Berlin. As far as I'm concerned, these are a no brainer. Very important public transport tip, make sure you validate your ticket before you get on public transport using one of the machines that you can find on the S-Bahn and U-Bahn platforms or on the bus. Almost the entire Berlin public transport network is based on an honor system, really, but there are plain clothes ticket inspectors everywhere. And if you get caught without a validated ticket, it's a 60 euro fine. And more importantly, everyone will think you're kind of a dick. Finally, this is an extremely bikeable city. It's almost completely flat. There's bike rental spots all over the city, including outside of train stations and, weirdly enough, little supermarkets. And to top it all off, there's 860 kilometers of dedicated bike paths. 860 kilometers! Berlin, you are so lucky. So grab a bike, grab a map, hit the road or, or the dedicated bike path and explore. So you might be wondering, what made us choose Berlin for an episode of Attaché? Well, apart from the obvious, there's actually a funny story. Let me take you back in time to about two weeks ago. So we thought we'd do something a little bit different for figuring out where we're gonna go for our next episode. We're being sponsored by Ancestry DNA this episode, and a few weeks ago, I got the Ancestry DNA kit and took the test, and we just got the results. And it's super easy to do. In fact, you can do this too. If you just go to ancestry.com slash attache, you can order a kit. You'll get 10% off as well if you use that URL. They send you a kit, you spit, which I'm very good at, into this little test tube, send the kit away, and then in six to eight weeks, you get these results. They take like billions of, of historical records, the millions of family trees, and like four million DNA samples, and compare your spit to all those people's spit, or DNA really. Now I have a pretty good idea where I'm gonna be from, it's Scotland. My grandfather is very Scottish, and I know that my roots go back pretty far in that, in that area. Wow, okay, so a lot of them are from Southeast England, which, which makes sense. My maternal family and ancestors are from Southeast England. It also says that 56% of my distant ancestors are from Germany, which I had absolutely no idea. This is, wow, this is fascinating. And actually, you know what, now that I think about it, I haven't, I haven't really talked about this, but uh, my middle brother, I have two brothers, uh, he's been battling cancer for a long time. He just had a stem cell transplant. And they go around uh, these databases looking for stem cell matches and the two perfect, literally perfect matches that he had, I did it, I was nowhere near a perfect match. The two perfect ones he had were both German. So, we're going to, we're going to Germany. So that is why we're in Germany. And if you want to take the same test that I did and discover your ancestry, just go to ancestry.com slash attache. That's ancestry.com slash A-T-T-A-C-H-E or click on the link in the show notes below. And when you get your results, come back and comment and use the hashtag MyAncestry and let us know what you discovered. Berlin loves street food. I love street food. Ergo, I love Berlin. All over Berlin you can find superb, extremely affordable food for just a few euros. Nestled under the tracks of the S-Bahn, holed up in temporary cabins across the city, are the purveyors of some of the finest street eats in the world. Examples, you say? How about this? Currywurst. You cannot come to Berlin and not have currywurst. I love the story of how this came to exist. The legend goes that in 1949, Herta Hoyer, one of the more entrepreneurial post-war residents of Berlin, got hold of some ketchup or Worcestershire sauce, that part of the legend is a little blurry, and some curry powder from British soldiers. And I just think that's adorable that British soldiers would have curry powder on their person at all times. Anyway, she mixed that into a sauce, poured it over fried pork sausage, and the rest is history. 70 million of these are consumed every year in Berlin alone. So roll up your sleeves, Get us some fries and a beer on the side and experience a Berlin institution. Because of its long history as a cosmopolitan capital, first of Prussia and then of Germany, Berlin has attracted immigrants from all over the world for more than three centuries. And when a city adopts and embraces the traditions, the ingredients and the techniques of its immigrant population, and vice versa, magical and delicious things happen. Like this, the Donner Kebab. Yeah, I'm sure you have kebabs in your hood too, but the 
Berlin Donner Kebab is a completely different beast from the high street kebab that we all know and love. It's uh, actually a relatively modern creation and it's uh, a riff on the, the usual Turkish grilled kebab, but the form, almost like a sandwich, the loads of vegetables and the, the variety of sauces were all introduced in Berlin by Turkish migrant workers in the 1970s. And it ranks among the best value, most satisfying street foods that you can find anywhere in the world. For three euros, you get enough meat, vegetables, and flatbread to feed a small village. But I think I'm just gonna eat this one by myself. So we asked our good friends over on the Berlin subreddit of reddit.com to point us in the direction of that one thing that we should experience while we're in Berlin. And as always, Redditors were incredibly generous with their time and suggestions, but the number one recommendation other than, quote, huge lines of speed was this, Berliner Weisse. It's a uh, sour wheat beer with deep roots in this beer-loving city, and it often comes with flavored syrups, um, usually raspberry or woodruff. Yeah, it is sour, but it is really refreshing. So when it's hot and they put ice in it sometimes, I definitely recommend this. It. Really, it's actually really good. And it is very unique to Berlin as well, so. When I was doing the research for this episode, this came up a lot, Club, Club Mate. It was described to me as the iron brew of Berlin which if you know what Iron Brew is, uh, makes it completely compelling and fascinating. So I've never tried it before. Apparently it's huge in the startup world. It's what keeps uh, the Berlin tech scene going, but I'm gonna try it. It's like citrusy iced tea, but caffeinated and sparkling. So do with that information what you will. It's not terrible, but it's not my favorite thing in the entire world either. Can't stop drinking it. Ich bin ein Berliner. That's actually an urban legend that JFK made an ass of himself by calling himself a jelly donut. But here's why it's confusing. Almost everywhere in Germany, except Berlin, a jelly donut is called a Berliner. But in Berlin, they're called Fankuchen, which means everywhere else in Germany, pancake. So if you want a pancake in Berlin, you ask for Eierkuchen. Got it? Confusing, I know. But you can see where that urban legend came from. Now, since we don't half-ass things here on Attaché, we wanted to have a Berliner, Fankuchen, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but we went with the Homer Simpson size Fankuchen. They say it's 500 grams. It weighs as, well, it weighs as much as a baby, it feels like. And there's probably two and a half liters of jam in there. 4,000 calories of Berliner goodness. I hadn't intended to show you this, but we were so close that it seemed criminal not to. Burgermeister, built in a disused men's toilet underneath the U-Bahn tracks. Supposed to be Germany's best burger, if not top three in Europe. Now, I have an unhealthy relationship with burgers. I even own part of a burger joint in London. So uh, I'm gonna try this and I'll give you my, my thoughts. Bacon, meat, lettuce which is, and tomato, which are both a crime in a burger, but we'll overlook that, and onions. So let's give it a whirl. Wow. Not bad, man. Not bad at all. But if meat isn't your thing, or you're looking just for something vegetarian, Berlin is the place to be. In 2015, Saveur magazine, which is my culinary bible, named Berlin the 2015 vegetarian city of the year. So you're never far away from really great vegetarian and vegan food, including some of the best falafel I've tasted outside of Lebanon. So if you're looking for something vegetarian or vegan, Berlin has you more than covered. Like most of Europe, Germany, and therefore Berlin, uses the euro. 
coins come in one, two, five, ten, twenty, fifty cent denominations, as well as one and two euros before notes take over. It's also worth mentioning that while comparable for restaurants and bars to a lot of other Western European cities, to live in Berlin is unbelievably cheap for some reason. Rent, public transport, utilities are all way cheaper than most European cities, which is one of the reasons along with the amazing nightlife, uh, good tech scene that attracts so many young people to this amazing city. Yet another reason to love Berlin. And while we're on that subject, let's do the rundown. A cup of coffee will cost you around two euros. A pint of beautiful Berlin beer will cost you three euros. And for the most reliable indicator of a nation's cost, the good old Big Mac, you're gonna pay about four euros. Actually, I wanna talk about this for a second. We get a lot of crap for even mentioning Big Macs on this show. A lot of food snobbery going on. But the Big Mac Index is not my invention, it's The Economist magazines. They came up with it about 30 years ago to compare purchasing power parity against two currencies and also to show how exchange rate markets can drastically vary the cost of a single item. So put down the pitchforks, chill out, there's legit economic theory at work here. Plus, ain't nothing wrong with no Big Mac. Like a lot of Europe, most shops in Berlin are closed on Sundays, but Bakeries and some small grocery stores in the busier neighborhoods will be open on Sundays. Same with restaurants and a lot of the street food vendors, so you ain't gonna starve. When it comes to paying for things, credit cards are widely accepted here, but not everywhere, so definitely keep some cash on you. And on the subject of paying for things, let's talk about tipping for a moment. It is a thing here, so do it. 10% in a restaurant is ample if you've had a good experience, five to 10% in a bar is fine as well. Now the custom in Germany is to tell the waiter or waitress how much you wanna pay, including the tip when you receive the bill. And if you're paying by card, you need to be very clear that the amount that you're putting on the card includes the tip. Unlike America, you cannot put tip on post transaction. So be sure you communicate that to the waiter, waitress, bartender when you're paying on card or settling the bill. Is Berlin cool? Yes. Of this, there can be no doubt. But it is also a city of huge cultural, political, and historic significance, a status that it wears with dignity and with grace. On its tree-lined boulevards, underneath its curving U-Bahn tracks, you'll find a city that will appeal to all of you in some way, no matter who you are or what you seek. I'm glad I had the opportunity to connect with this city on some level. In fact, on many levels. And I hope you get the chance to as well. For I can assure you, Berlin will not disappoint.